let's analyze a rational function. So it says the concentration C of a drug in a patient's bloodstream after some amount of hours, T hours, after injection is given by this function where the concentration is going to be equal to 100 multiplied by the amount of hours that pass divided then by 2 times the amount of hours that pass squared plus then 75. It says use a calculator to approximate the time when the concentration is the highest. Fine. So we go to our calculator, all right, and we're going to plug in the function. So we do 100 T, in this case, it's just X, divided then by, make sure you use parentheses down here in the, in the denominator, all right, because you have to make sure that the entire denominator is being divided into the numerator, okay? So that's why you kind of need the parentheses there when you plug it into the calculator. So you're going to do 2X squared uh, and then plus your 75, all right? And now we'll hit graph, but we're going to make some adjustments, okay? So you can kind of see this graph. We, we have this nice little uh, curvy thing to it. But we can uh, maybe analyze it a little bit better and find a better uh, picture of it by manipulating the window and understanding concentration, okay? What's the lowest concentration you can have of a drug in your bloodstream? What do you think? Well, zero, right? How can you have a negative concentration of a drug? That doesn't make any sense. Either you have some or you have none. So what that means then is that, remember this is Y, this is basically the Y, and uh, your T is the X. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your Y and your minimum value, you know it cannot be lower than zero, okay? Let's leave the max alone at 10 for now. We'll see if we have to adjust that at, at any point in time, okay? Now also think about then your time. What's the smallest amount of time you can think of? Well, assuming that there's no such thing as negative time, I know we can think about the time in the past, but in terms of, let's say, T hours after injection of a drug, how can you have negative time after some injection? You can't, right? It's going to be a minimum of zero. So we'll leave the rest alone. We'll say the X max is 10. We'll probably adjust that a little bit. And the Y max is going to be 10 as well. And let's now hit our graph, okay? So as you can see here, we get a nice little picture, okay? And what I'm going to do, and you can kind of think about this, what do you think is going to happen to the amount of drug in the bloodstream over an extended amount of time? What do you think? Do you think it's going to increase over like a really long amount of time? So let's say you, you took some, you, t you know, you took some antibiotic, uh, you know, you took um, Cipro. I don't know why I was confusing that with another drug. <laughs> But uh, let's say you take Cipro, you take amoxicillin or something, and uh, let's say you take it one time. What do you think the concentration is going to be in your bloodstream 10 years after you take that? <laughs> you know it's going to be zero, right? You know it's going to be zero. So why don't we go to our window, and we're going to adjust the X max a little bit. Let, let's say it goes to maybe 50, all right? So 50 hours, right? 50 hours would be a little bit over two days. Now, you can kind of see this graph is starting to take a little bit better shape, all right? And maybe we'll go to 75 hours or something like that, all right? So here's the graph, okay? As you can see, the drug, the amount peaks at some point in time. And it's going to peak a few hours, right, after you take it. Okay, we're going to zoom in on that a little bit and try to figure that out. But over, after it peaks, then it's going to drop, you know, to some amount. And obviously over time, as the time extends and extends and extends, I don't know what's happening to my hand there. Um, early Parkinson's, maybe I'm not sure, but, uh, you know, as the time extends and extends and extends, it goes to zero. All right. Now to find this, this maximum point, we're going to use the calculator. You can use calculus to do that, but this is not calculus yet. So we're going to try to use that calculator to estimate it. So we can just do it maybe visually. So let's go to our window. We're going to make this a little bit smaller. Let's go back to 10. Okay. And let's bring this on in. Well, I'm just going to overlay it here, okay? And we can kind of see, you know, it looks like it's hitting a max somewhere around in this region, okay? And remember, each of these tick marks represented a unit of one. That's because in my window, the X scale here is one. That stands for X scale. So every tick mark represents one unit. So this is one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hour. So it looks like somewhere around six hours or so it's going to hit its max. All right. What you can also do is you can use your calculator here. There's a cool little trick. So go to your calc function, hit second trace. That'll bring up your calc or calculate. And what you're going to do is you want to find the maximum. All right. You want to find the max value. So hit, hit that. Okay. Enter. Now you want to, it, you're going to have to select three points. Okay. Your maximum, let's say is occurring somewhere around here. 
So what they want you to do is they just want you to give the calculator rough uh, area or rough location so it doesn't have to calculate you know, so many values. So you just have to be to the left. You're going to select any point to the left. I don't care if you were here or here or even over here. That's fine. All right. But you're going to be some left point of the maximum value and you're going to hit enter. Then it wants you to go to the right. So you're going to hit over to the right button and you're going to go over to the right. Make sure you're far enough away and that's fine. You don't have to go crazy. But now we're definitely to the right of that point, the highest point. And now it's asking you to guess Guess where the maximum is. You don't have to be exact. You just got to find it roughly. Okay? Don't worry too much about it. Just hit enter. The calculator is going to do the work. Now, this is what they did. Okay? Now, the calculator here is telling you that the maximum is occurring when X is equal to 6.12. Well, X was the time. What did we say visually? We said about six hours. Right now, you know exactly what it is. 6.1237253 hours. So a little over six hours, it reaches its maximum. And then you can also answer what's the maximum concentration. It looks like the maximum concentration is going to be here about 4.08. All right, 4.08, whatever the units are. I don't know what they, they just told us that this is in hours time. I don't know what the concentration is. Could be, you know, milligrams per deciliter. Who the heck knows? But that's the number at least, okay? Uh, yeah, so that's it. So you can use your calculator exactly to figure that out. Or you can use some techniques involving calculus to help yourself figure that out. Uh, there's a lot of cool ways to kind of do this. Um, but yeah, that's all there kind of is to it. So I really do hope this helps. Um, and if it did, hey, give us a hand. Like, subscribe, maybe tell some of your classmates. And we'd also like to help you with more stuff because we have thousands of videos out there, not only in math, but chemistry, physics as well. We have a ton more stuff coming. And we're constantly producing new content to help you succeed, okay? I know this can all be very tough, and it's kind of confusing where to go. We got you covered, okay? We're constantly building, so please check us out. Go to our website, visit us on YouTube, drop us a line, write a comment, all right? And uh, we'll see you for more. Take care.